One of the most common words that are used when this, that subject is discussed is intercession. And that's a word that throws people for a curve because they know somebody who is called, well, they're an intercessor. People who pray a great, great deal and they think, well, I, I just don't have that kind of a schedule or I, I don't know that I could do that. But the Bible says that intercession is within the reach of every person and it's not something that's accomplished by a style and it certainly isn't something that puts you on the clock for a given amount of time to verify to God you're sincere. Spiritual energy and power comes about because of faith in the Lord and not because of a performance orientation. It regards faith and that bottom line brings us to the place that Paul in writing Timothy said to him as a young pastor, I want to give you a pastoral point of priority. Here's what he said. 1 Timothy chapter 2, the first three verses. He said, I exhort first of all, hear that priority, I exhort first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks, be made for all men. In other words, pray for everybody. Pray your way around the world once a month anyway. And for all who are in authority, rulers, instead of complaining about government, pray for it. That's the directive of the Lord. Do this, it continues, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. It'll affect your neighborhood, it'll affect your national life. If the church prayed the way this text in 1 Timothy says, it would transform a culture in very short time, and it wouldn't be because of the power of the vote or a protest. It would be because of the people of God taking their place. That we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all reverence and godliness. It says this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. The Bible says that the release of the will of God and all of its beauty is dependent upon people who learn to pray with the Holy Spirit's help and in the face of things even that become so heavy that they groan within, that the Holy Spirit will help them pray, praying, transcending themselves, prayer in the Spirit, and praying with the understanding or with the Spirit's help. The Bible says in Romans 8, 26 and 27, that we don't always know how to pray as we should, but the Holy Spirit helps our weaknesses. Sometimes we pray with groanings that you can hardly even speak. The Apostle Paul said, I will pray with the Spirit and pray with the understanding. Sometimes we pray with the prayer language the Holy Spirit gives. Other times we pray with our understanding or the blend of those things. But the Bible says that those things, when we enter into prayer in that way, is a form of intercession, that we make intercession, transcending our capacity even to give expression. We don't even know how to pray for what we should pray. So something in us cries out in ways that just saying, oh Lord, if I spoke my native language, said, oh Lord, I just don't even know what to say that I'm so troubled about, and then just leave that with him and let your heart even be broken in his presence as that may be the case. Jesus and uh, others throughout the whole course of the scriptures, throughout the course of church history, have set aside time in the morning to be with the Lord. The Bible first says that we are to come before the Lord and enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. That's in Psalm 100, verse 4. And the directive that the Bible gives in that regard is basically saying, I'm calling you into my presence. His gates are depictive of a place of entry, and we're to come with praise. And the gates are, in the ancient use of the word, was not only the place where you accessed entry, but it's the place where decisions were made. Gates of ancient cities were places of governance. The Lord is saying, I want you to come into my presence and to function in a way that makes a difference in the affairs of things, the same way that governance does. I want you to come before me and just come first with praise. Then he said it into my into my courts, into my gates with thanksgiving, and then into my courts with praise. I want to talk to you about praise as a pattern of presenting yourself, of 
raising your hands and invoking his presence. I want to talk about inviting his work in our lives. P, R, I for invite. S, I want us to come and sing before the Lord as a part of preparing ourselves. It's refreshing and uplifting. God's not running a talent contest, so you'll be adequate. And then, in entering his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, then be ready to enter the day. I want to talk about the that we do part of prayer. Because for most of it, it starts in some kind of a pattern of daily prayer. And I want to turn to that subject for a moment, not to invoke guilt if you've had a hard time establishing the, the habit, but because it is fundamental and needful. And when the Lord says in his word that he gives the picture of his own son on earth, God Almighty in his word said, my son was there, he was praying regularly. Son of God on earth, living life as a man among us. The Bible describes in Luke 11 that he was praying one day in a certain place and his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. That's when he taught them the Lord's Prayer. It's a pattern and it's a grid that's worth understanding. He went on and said to us in the same subject, but in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, he said, if you will ask, it will be given to you. If you will seek, you'll find. If you'll knock, it will be opened to you. Listen to the sense of assignment that is there. And it's something we live out on a daily basis, all the way from daily bread to issues that have to do with the entry of the rule of God into an earth that has been smothered in the rule of human confusion and satanic hatred and vindictiveness. You say, well, I thought Jesus conquered the devil. He did. He did. But as long as the adversary can carry off his program of deception, people will buy into his program. And it succeeds because of unbelief. And Jesus didn't come to smother that because free choice is what is given to humanity. And people still have a chance to open to the love of God. The summons to us as believers, having made the choice to receive him, is to make the choice to pray as we're called to pray. And so when he calls us to pray, it begins with that basic practice of daily prayer. The Bible says that when we come to the Lord in prayer, that it's always a good starting place to say, Lord, you know, forgive me my trespasses, I forgive those who trespass against me. In other words, confess, and the Lord's Prayer says that's not bad to daily do that, not as a pretend quote, but as a genuine examination if my heart's right toward other people. Then, pray for other people, and then, the Bible says, the health of God will flow to you, and the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous person then will avail much. That phrase, effectual, that literally means the energy of God is in it because you have come to the place that there's a passion in your heart that is reaching out to him because he has called us to make the difference on earth by inviting him to do what only his power can. But we need to come, as I said, to the brass tacks of saying, I'm into this. I'm all the way into it. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man. Well, that's the problem, Jack. I don't always feel righteous. I don't think I really always have it all together. Listen, dear one, if you and I are depending upon our perfection to get answers to prayer, you might as well give it up right now. But when you turned your heart to Jesus, then you took the step into the place where the righteousness of God was attributed to you because of him. Now, that wasn't a license to get sloppy with our lives or continued carelessly but it's to move in confidence without condemnation and certainty and faith when we pray. The effective, energized prayer of a person who gets into it fervently. And that doesn't mean you have to scream loud or roll on the floor. It means you have to say, Lord, I'm, I really believe this, and I'm going for it, contending for the faith that's been put within reach. And as I pray, it will avail much. That's what the Lord says.